Hello everyone, welcome to YouTube. I am Arun Kumar and welcome to Bio 38 MCQ series. 38 means 38 chapters in 11th and 12th standard biology and I'll be dealing with the multiple choice questions of all 38 chapters for the next 38 days. This Bio 38 MCQ series includes concept wise MCQs from all 38 chapters. As I'll be sharing MCQs, important MCQs of all 38 chapters and I request you to subscribe to YouTube channel and let us grow together. In this session, I'll discuss concept wise MCQs of the chapter Morphology of Flowering Plants. Let us see the first concept, the root. Let us see the first question that is diagrammatic question taken from your NCRT textbook. There is a high possibility of getting this question for your NEET or CET examination. Uh, the question is the given figure shows the regions of root tip with labeling as A, B and C. Choose the option which shows the correct labeling of A, B and C. Let us just identify what is A, B, C. So we know that A is the region of maturation. Here the root hairs grow. Whereas B is the region of elongation where you could see the root normally elongates. That is actually it increases its length. Whereas C is uh, the high cell division region that is also called as region of meristematic activity. Here cell division is very high. Just below that you could see the root cap okay so the answer is option d a is region of maturation b is region of elongation whereas c is region of or zone of meristematic activity let us move to the second question uh, the given figures a and b show the modification of roots which of the following statements regarding these figures is correct so a and b diagrams are given a contains three uh, diagrams that is uh, turnip and carrot they are uh, tap roots uh, where uh, they store food uh, sweet potato is adventitious root uh, that is also store food whereas nematophores that is a b diagram uh, that actually for respiration they respire uh, oxygen normally seen in the mangrove plants okay so options tap roots of carrot turnip okay that is correct and adventitious root of sweet potato that is also correct get swollen okay and store food Yes, they are all for storage of food and normally they are swollen and they store the starch. Okay, so option A is correct. Let us go to option B. Let us see. Nematophores conducts water. No, they are for respiration. Minerals and photosynthesis. No, they are mainly for oxygen respiration. Okay, so that B is wrong. C. Nematophore is found in the plant that grow in sandy soil that is normally seen in uh, the mangrove climatic conditions okay so c is also wrong turnip and carrot shows adventitious roots no tap roots where sweet potato shows tap root no adventitious root so option a is correct for this question let us go to the third question uh, nematophores are found in as i said earlier nematophores are mainly for the respiration of oxygen normally found in mangrove regions or mangrove plants okay that is a marshy and saline lake so option a is correct answer for this question okay so b let us see the vegetation which is found in saline soil yes but at the same time marshy regions also so we have to go with option a c xerophytic condition no xerophytic means a desert condition no hydrophytic condition that is a uh, water aquatic condition that is also wrong for this uh, question so option a is correct for nematophores fourth question uh, which of the following plants grow in swampy areas where the roots come out of the ground and grow vertically upwards this is normally seen in nematophores so that is a uh, rhizophora is a very good example that is a um, type of mangrove plant where uh, this rhizophora exhibit uh, nematophores that is a type of root which grow vertically upward okay so that is just above the substratum and uh, they are negatively geotropic so option c is correct for this question next which of the following plant parts is generally green when young and later often becomes woody and dark brown uh, this is stem because stem normally when uh, in young stages it is green in color but later uh, it becomes uh, woody and uh, darkish brown because of the secondary xylem activity so option a is correct for this question next question uh, prop roots of banyan tree are meant for uh, the prop root is nothing but uh, a type of adventitious roots for extra mechanical support in uh, big trees uh, prop roots also called as pillar roots normally seen in uh, a banyan tree uh, main function of them is providing support to the big tree so option c is correct for this uh, question 
next question stilt roots occur in uh, stilt root also type of adventitious root so mainly for uh, mechanical support for the plant or tree so stilt root normally arise from the lower nodes of stem and enter the soil uh, obliquely here rice and wheat both actually have a type of roots called as a fibrous roots so sugarcane is a correct example for stilt root so we have to go with option c that is sugarcane we'll go to the next question uh, the part of the root which is most active in water absorption is called actually if you look into the regions of the root uh, there are three main regions uh, that is uh, maturation zone where uh, root hairs are present and this is the region where uh, the water absorption and mineral absorption is very high because of the presence of tiny root hairs around that area in the maturation zone so we got the answer for this question okay root cap actually provides protection whereas meristematic zone is uh, containing lot of cells which are uh, highly active that is a uh, division rate is very high whereas zone of elongation is the region where uh, the root elongates okay so we have to go with option b that is the correct answer for the question let us go to the next question fibrous roots develop in maize from so in maize we see a type of fibrous root which is called as stilt roots they are a type of adventitious roots uh, they normally originate from the lower nodes of the maize uh, plant so we'll go with option b it's a direct question so option b is correct next which of the following plant parts elongates directly and leads to the formation of primary roots bud radical plumule root hair uh, the answer is a radical because in dicotyledonous plants in di dicot plants the direct elongation of radical leads to the formation of primary root which grows inside the soil so we'll go with option b radical next the primary roots and its branches constitute the fibrous root system tap root system adventitious root system we know that the primary roots has branches that is called as secondary tertiary etc the primary roots and its branches constitute the tap root system as seen in dicots like brassica mustard plants etc so we'll go with option b tap root system next question fibrous root system is found in uh, we know that it is seen only in monocots uh, like monocotyledonous plants uh, particularly in uh, triticum that is wheat so it's a direct question the answer is a monocotyledonous plants next roots develop from parts of the plant other than radical are called uh, it's very simple that is directly picked from ncrt that is adventitious roots for example uh, prop roots in banyan tree or stilt roots in uh, sugarcane or zea maize that is maize plant or screw pine so answer is adventitious roots normally roots develop from parts of the plant other than radical it will not uh, directly originate from the radical if the root originate from the radical then it is called as tap root okay so we have to go with option c that is correct the next question which is a direct question uh, root hairs develop from we all know that uh, in the root there are three regions the first region is the region of maturation where root hairs are there which is really helpful in absorption of uh, the water as well as minerals from the soil so we have to go with the option a region of maturation the next two concepts the leaf and the stem let us see the questions from these two concepts uh, particularly the leaf the given figures a and b show two types of compound leaves choose the option which identify the correct compound leaf and their example c so here a is a uh, neem leaf which is pinnately compound that is correct as given in your ncrt textbook whereas b is palmately compound the example is silk cotton so here option a and d both are correct uh, and their examples also correct here so we have to go with uh, option a as well as option d We'll go to the next question which is a uh, match the following type uh, match the following stem modifications given in column one with their examples given in column two and select the correct combination from the options given below so in column one stem modifications are given and in column two examples like where exactly you see these kind of uh, modifications are given underground stem uh, normally seen in potato as we know so in the option c and d uh, out of two any one should be the answer we'll see uh, stem tendril uh, stem tendril will be seen in cucumber so we found the answer actually option d should be the correct okay we'll see stem thorns uh, will be seen in uh, citrus yeah citrus plants like lime plants okay so flattened stem which is normally seen in apuntia like phyllo clade will be seen which stores uh, the water 
and uh, sunken stomata will be seen fleshy cylindrical stem uh, which is normally seen in euphorbia so option d is correct for this uh, question let us see the next question looks very easy which of the following is a modified stem for the protection of plants from browsing animals like cattle sheep goat uh, option a tendrils no it helps uh, the plant to climb thorns yes uh, that is mainly for protection okay so option b is the correct answer rhizome we know that uh, they are uh, having nematophores a different type of uh, modified roots tuber like potato no that is for storage so option b is correct thorns next question stem tendrils are found in cucumber pumpkins grape vines all of these uh, stem tendrils are a type of uh, uh, structure which actually comes from the stem they are uh, slender and spirally coiled uh, you normally see them in uh, cucumber even uh, pumpkins even uh, the vitis that is uh, grape vines okay uh, in grape uh, they are modified uh, like a pickle bud or modified a pickle bud so we have to go with option d because uh, stem tendrils will be seen in all mentioned here so option d is correct for this question next question uh, it's a direct question uh, which of the following groups of plants have underground stems uh, in underground stems they are a bit modified for storage uh, there are four types one is tuber rhizome corm and bulb so let us see here potato is a tuber which is a modified stem for storage ginger is also rhizome which is also modified for storage turmeric rhizome zamican is corm okay whereas colocasia is also corm uh, they have not mentioned about onion that is alium sepa which is a, a type of bulb which is also modified stem for storage so option b is correct for this uh, question potato ginger turmeric zamican and colocasia they are modified underground stems let us see the next question uh, which of the following is the green expanded part of leaf with vein and veinlets uh, it's very easy directly asked from the ncrt textbook itself option a petiole b node c stipule d lamina actually answer is lamina let me tell you what is petiole petiole is a, a structure a long structure which is normally seen at the center of the leaf which help uh, to hold the leaf blade to sunlight whereas node is the region of the stem where the leaf is born or originates stipule is a leaf like structure which is found normally found at the base of the leaf Lamina is the expanded part which contains a small structures called as veins and veinlets. Okay, so the answer is D. Lamina. Next question. Uh, this question is uh, based on uh, the sub aerial stem modification. Uh, in which of the following plants a slender lateral branch arises from the base of the main axis and after growing aerially arch to downwards to touch the ground? normally you see in uh, the jasmine as well as uh, mint okay so we got the answer for it uh, but before that let me tell you there are four different types of sub aerial stems first one is runner normally grasses exhibit this whereas stolon stolon is uh, is related to this question they actually uh, a slender lateral branch which comes from the base of the main axis of the stem and uh, after growing uh, for some time they aerially arch downwards okay so ultimately they touch the ground uh, that is seen in mint and jasmine and this type of modification is called as stolon so remember this whereas in uh, the pineapple uh, particularly pineapple and banana you see suckers another type of uh, sub aerial stems whereas pishia and icornia exhibit the offset okay so that is mainly for reproduction icornia is also called as terror of bengal so option a is correct for this question next question uh, looks like statement type question uh, study the following statements and select the correct option okay four statements are given birds are present in the axile of leaflets of the compound leaf if you look into the compound leaf where uh, you see the lamina which uh, has a lot of incision to produce leaflets tiny leaflets uh, for example neem where birds are absent uh, at the base of each leaflet uh, so option that is a uh, statement one is wrong Pulvinous leaf base is present in some leguminous plants. Yes, a swollen base, a leaf base will be seen in some leguminous plants like beans. So that is correct. In Alstonia, the petioles expand, become green and synthesize food. No, you don't see in Alstonia, but you see this in some Australian acacia. They normally a bit flat for photosynthesis. So as a result of photosynthesis, food can be synthesized. So Alstonia, that is wrong. Statement 3 is wrong. 
Opposite phylotaxy is seen in guava. Yes, you see the opposite phylotaxy in guava. So that is correct. So here statement 2 and statement 4 are correct, but 1 and 3 statements are incorrect. So option A is correct for this question. Next question. Uh, this question is related to the structure of leaf. Which of the following statements are correct about the leaf? Uh, statement 1. Leaf is a lateral, generally flattened structure born on the stem. Yes, correct. They are all born on the stem from the node of the stem. So, statement 1 is correct. It develops at the node, yes, and bears a bud in its axle. If you look into the simple leaf, a bud is there. Okay, that is the source of its origin. So, bud is there in simple leaf. Okay, so 1 and 2 statements are correct. Third, leaves originate from the root apical meristems. No, it is originate from the shoot apical meristem. So that is wrong. Four, they are the most important vegetative organs for reproduction. No, leaf will not play any role in reproduction. So option A is correct. Statement 1 and 2 are the correct statements for the leaf. Next question, read the following statements and answer the question. Statement 1, it is the pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or branch, uh, then it is called as phyllotaxy. Uh, second statement, it is usually of three types, alternate, opposite and old. Yes, in phyllotaxy you see three types. Third statement, it is meant for getting maximum amount of light. Yes, because of the arrangement of the leaves on the stem, it helps the leaf to get adequate amount of light. So that is also phyllotaxy. Okay, so let us see the question. Which condition of plant is being described by the above statements? Yes, answer is phyllotaxy. Yes. Then what is uh, venation? Venation is nothing but uh, it is the arrangement of veins and veinlets in the leaf lamina. What is inflorescence? It is nothing but uh, the modified shoot where the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem. That is nothing but flower. Then what is estivation? It is nothing but the arrangement of sepals or petals in a floral bud in relation to other members of the same whole. So that is estivation. So phyllotaxy is the correct answer for this uh, question. So we'll go with option A. Next question, identify the kind of phyllotaxy shown in the given figures A, B and C. Phyllotaxy is nothing but it's the pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or branch of a plant. Okay, so the diagram A looks like alternate uh, phyllotaxy alternate means from each node a single leaf arises uh, for example in china rose like hibiscus or brassica that is mustard or helianthus sunflower you see alternate phyllotaxy the second diagram b is opposite exactly like at a pair of opposite uh, leaves arise from the stem okay so you see them in calotropis as well as in uh, the guava Okay, so that is example for opposite phyllotaxy. The C is vold. What is vold? From each node, more than two leaves arise and form a vol. You see in, uh, see, uh, vold phyllotaxy in uh, Alstonia. Yes, Alstonia is a very good example for vold phyllotaxy. So remember these examples. So option A is correct for this question. Students, I have discussed a total of 25 questions from the concepts root, stem and leaf from the chapter Morphology of Flowering Plants. I hope that uh, this session is really helpful for you to understand uh, different types of questions from this uh, chapter for your CET as well as NEET examination. If you like this session, please do subscribe to my channel NEET Yug. I'll be coming with more MCQs of the same chapter. That is, I'm going to cover up the remaining concepts. Thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe.